Uh, good afternoon, church. Um, can can we switch off these two lights? Uh? Because uh, this morning, uh, someone told me that he couldn't see a projection. Um, while they sort out the things, I just want to let you know. Uh, now, in case of any emergencies in this church, uh, uh, you look at all the cloa signs, uh, all these will lead to the external part of the church. You know, you go down here, you go out through the fellowship hall, uh, through the uh, glass doors at the end, it will take you to the car park. Uh, okay, so then you run out in case of emergency. Same thing with these two doors. Uh, it will lead to another door outside, to the balcony. Now, those doors are unlocked. Okay, the padlock has been uh, removed. You just unbolt it. Then you will go into the get into the balcony, and then you can exit down to where you park our vans. Okay, so uh, this have, uh, I did not want to tell you this a few weeks ago because I do not want to spook all of you. Huh? Okay, now that we have security in place, it's much much easier. Now, um, today I want to talk to you about. Can these lights be turned on? So that you can see it brighter. Cannot, huh? Okay, now, um, today I want to share with you about something that is very important to us uh, ministry to our children. Uh, it will be in two parts. The first part will be dealing in uh, children ministry in general. And then, uh, part two, I will be talking about children discipline. Okay, and uh, the last time I shared this message, was I believe it was 1993 or 94 when um, Jason was very much younger. Just how long ago, you know, I last shared about this particular topic. And, um, you know, as we look at the world right now, uh, um, the traditional family values are being threatened. And what is it being threatened by? Well, it's being threatened by things like materialism, secularism, and also negative media influence. Can you see it? Anna? Okay, that's great. Now, one of the things, uh, you know, materialism, we know what it is all about. Secularism, it is about, um, you know, religion right now is no longer an issue. You know, nobody is interested in it. Um, our world is becoming more secular. And then negative media influence. I want to talk in uh, a bit more detail concerning this particular topic. Um, what is negative media influence? Well, um, our world right now is filled with a lot of rubbish. Yeah, a lot, a lot of rubbish. Um, things that promote ungodly attitudes and values. Uh, you know the thing about present day um, media information, uh, it is value neutral, you know. They don't tell you whether it's good or bad. You decide. You want information, internet will deliver all this information uh, to you, you know. Okay? And we must recognize the people that are behind the internet, the media, you know. All of them have a hidden agenda. And the ultimate person behind all this is Satan himself. You must always, always remember this. You know why I say that um, the, the media is value neutral? Uh, it's because you all want the information. Uh, okay? And right now, you know, when our young people and some of us adults, you know, when we go on the internet, you know, when we don't have that control that is set in place to, uh, inside of us because it was not taught to us or it was not... Uh, we were not trained by our parents, you know. We don't know how to switch off. And when you don't know how to switch off, that's very, very dangerous. You know, that free flow of information. You know, I was sharing with the, the church this morning, you know, last time when in my time, you know, when we want to look at Playboy magazine, you go looking for it, isn't it? Yeah? Yeah. Uh, Anderson Road, Jobu Bookshop, the last, uh, the last bookcase in the corner. That's where they have all the Playboy books, you know. Okay, 
Right now, you don't have to go to all these places. You go onto the internet, you just type it in, everything comes out. Unadulterated, full volume, okay, in every detail, okay, in glossy picture, nothing left to the imagination. Yeah, so that is how evil our times are these days, you know. And what do all these things promote? It promotes sex outside of marriage. It promotes violence and evil. They are normal. That's what the messages that are coming out from the media to all our young people. You know, they are telling us also that religion is unacceptable, uh, unacceptable, and you don't have to listen to your parents. Listen to yourself. That's your message, you know, that we are telling. Um, that's what the internet is telling. And the last thing, you know, they tell you, you know, happiness can be purchased. If you're sad, go on to Lazada, go shopping. That's a cure, you know, to unhappiness. Go shopping. Lazada is so good, you know, when you tell them you're looking for something, uh, wow, all the notifications come on day in, day night, you know. Middle of the night, you're getting thing, you know, you look it up, oh, Lazada, send you a voucher. $2 voucher, and you go crazy over $2. So these are the things the standards our children will be taking into, our, into their hearts, you know. And I want to tell you that not everything over the internet is true. Not everything is true. So, um, we must be able to recognize the tactics, you know, of the evil one. Yeah? And um, in 1 Peter 5.8, now can you see it? 1 Peter 5.8, just write it down. It says, you know, that we must be vigilant. The enemy, the devil, is prowling like a roaring lion, you know, looking for people to devour. And who are they looking for? Vulnerable young people. Vulnerable young people. Okay? So, as parents, as um, people who love our children, you know, what can we do? What can you and I do to prevent our, to protect our young, uh, our young people, to protect our children? Well, the first thing that we can, uh, we must remember, you know, that we must never underestimate the ability of our children to understand biblical truths about God and Jesus, you know. Yeah, never, never underestimate the ability of our children. They are able to absorb a tremendous, tremendous amount of even information. Even though they may not be listening to you, they may be doing something else, you know. But when you go back, you ask them, you know, they can tell you, you know, some main points of what the preacher has shared. You know, I was, uh, it's like our children have two computers inside us, you know, running full time, both at the same time, you know, double tasking. That's our children, yeah? So, um, we also think, you know, that the devil will not tempt our little children. Well, I want to tell you that you are wrong. The devil will want to mark, to put his mark on the minds and hearts of the children as young as possible. You know, when you go to a restaurant these days, you know, how do parents keep their children from disturbing them while they are enjoying their, their food. Pick trotters, you know? Uh, you know, all the nice food before them, you know. Don't cry, you know, I'm busy eating. You don't want to eat, that's your problem. Here's my handphone. You watch something on it, you know. That's how we look after our children, you know. Okay. So, you look at the children, uh, how they so instinctively know how to work that smartphone. Yeah? Three, four years old, you know? And research shows uh, in 1970, children only begin to spend the time before the television uh, in 1970 when they are four years old. My time, uh, four years old. Uh. Now, research shows that children four months old already on the internet. Four months old, you know. 
Okay, so imagine, you know, oh, it's so innocent, you know, keep them busy with something so that you all can enjoy your food. And, you know, without you knowing, uh, Satan already got his mark on their hearts, of the, on the hearts and the souls of the children. While you are not looking, you know. Now, how young should we start, uh, should we start telling our children uh, that Jesus loves them? You know, like, uh, you know, like, you know, we love our children. Yeah. Uh, we want to tell our children, Jesus also loves you. You know, uh, you ask a question, you know, uh, okay, if that's the case, you know, how young can we send our children? How young before we can send our children to KKC? Well, we have a rule in KKC, as long as you can sit still, you can come. Yeah. As long as they can understand basic concepts, they can come. Yeah. So, um, you know, one of the things about sending children uh, to KKC, you know, um, parents say, you know, it's very inconvenient. Four o'clock in the afternoon actually is a, is, is a very bad time on Sunday afternoon. You know, my children need to nap. Mommy and daddy also need to nap. Okay. On the institution, there's homework, you know. Uh, so many valid reasons. Really, they are valid. Very valid. But then, we must remember, you know. Actually, our children, do they really need to nap? Four years old, five years old. I can understand mommy and daddy needing, needing to nap. Okay? But children... You know, you can always send your children, you can go back and nap. Two hours, then come back and pick up your children. You'll be fresh to play with your children again, you know. Okay? Now, um, what, um, what happens in KKC? Let me tell you about KKC first uh, before I go to the next point. You know, in KKC, uh, you must remember we're dealing with very young children. Yeah? Four and above, huh? Okay? Here, you must remember, you know, children... Children, uh, concept. Concept is, you tell them something, they must be able to relate to somebody. Okay? So we tell them, Jesus loves little children. Jesus loves little children. We give them a picture, we show them, this is Jesus. Okay? Then what else? Oh, Jesus loves mommy and daddy too. Okay? Why we love Jesus? Well, we love Jesus because He gave us the trees, the sun, and the moon. Then we tell them Jesus gave us mummies and daddies and grandmas and grandpas. And then Jesus gave us friends. Okay? Jesus gave us milk for us to drink and food to eat. So we are teaching these little children that Jesus is their creator and Jesus loves them. Very simple concept. No? Some of you say, hey, it's so simple. Just like that. No? Well, the thing is, I got Jesus into the heart, into the door of their heart, you know. I have won the first step. Okay, I'm ahead of the devil. Okay, it's very important for us to be able to speak into the lives of the children, no matter how young they are. You cannot say, you know, oh, uh, they're not ready yet. I tell you, if they're able to play games on the on the smartphone, and I tell you they are ready. Okay. So the other thing is, uh, I want you to remember, you know, our little children uh, are going to be eternal beings. Yeah. Um, even though they are only three years old, uh, he or she is going to live forever. With or without Jesus in their hearts. They're going to live forever, you know. Either they know Jesus or they don't know Jesus. So this is something I want to place before you, you know. It's not so simple like you think, oh, it is nothing. It is something. It is very, very important for us to remember this. And statistics, uh, 2019, America, maybe it's applicable here also, 66% of Christians come to faith before the age of 18. 66% you know, 
of Christians come to faith before the age of 18. Now, what does this say about our strategy for our church? Some of us say in our children's ministry, you know, even in Laos where I am, they got no budget for children's ministry. One, you know, whatever happens, uh, it is always the adult ministry gets the major portion of the budget. You know, what's left over, if any, it is for the children's ministry. Everything is secondary, you know. So, you know, knowing all this, you know, the fact that our children uh, is going to spend an eternity with or without Jesus, 66% of Christians will come to faith before the age of 18. A, we better place a high priority for the children ministry in this church. These little children, when they go home from KKC, they're going to tell their mummies and daddies about Jesus. Four years old, huh? already evangelist, you know, sharing about Jesus to their parents. And many of them in our KKC, yeah, they are non-Christians. They're hearing it from the children, you know, the mouth of the children about who Jesus is. You know, there will never be another opportunity for us to speak into the life of the children like how we are doing it to KKC right now. So do not allow this moment of time to be robbed by the devil. If we miss this, it will take us a lifetime to make up for this. You know. So, you know, you, you think that, um, you know, Sunday morning we have a little flam ministry, uh, and then on Sunday afternoon, 4 o'clock, we have KKC, you know, oh, it's only a babysitting service, you know. It is not. It is not a babysitting service. Yeah. It is not. Every one of our teachers sacrifice their weekends preparing and speaking into the lives of our children. So don't look at it as just babysitting, you know. It is not babysitting. It's about putting God into the lives of our children to prepare them for eternity. That's how, how um, you know, how serious this thing is. We have a large group of teachers in KKC, yeah? 20 to 30 of them, you know. So, Every afternoon they come, whether the children come or not, all of them come. Sometimes we have more teachers than children because of holidays, exams, you know, uh, plus a lot of other things. Uh, okay? But the teachers are, are here, ever ready to speak into the life of the children, you know. You know, there's that little window that we must always catch. If you don't catch, when that window of the lives and the hearts of the children uh, to their hearts, uh, that window, uh, you don't catch it, we will lose that opportunity. Okay? So it's very important for us to plan and save for the welfare and education of our children. But it can never be greater than planning and sacrificing for the eternity of our children. And all of you put money away for uh, education, you know. It's a big expense, a very big expense when it comes to education. But it cannot be greater, can never, never be greater than planning and sacrificing the future of our children in eternity. So parents, today I want to, I want you to rethink of your priorities yeah, on Sunday afternoon. And, you know, we are looking at uh, volunteers also. Yeah, so... Uh, apart from the teachers, uh, you know, we, we, we are looking at uh, the young people coming to help us with worship, okay, and also taking part in uh, doing skits and sometimes we have uh, games, you know. It, 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 we, we need so many volunteers and right now we are getting more ladies, more sisters and guys, you know. And it would be so good if we can have grandparents, grandmothers come and join us, yeah. So, um, I just want to give you, uh, let you all uh, know about what's happening in KKC ministry. You know, if you're interested, just come and just drop by this four o'clock this afternoon. Now, the other part that I want to share with you uh, is concerning um, discipline. We're talking about effective discipline, you know. 
what is effective discipline? Well, this effective discipline is discipline that is based on God's standard. God's standard. Okay. Now, the Bible instructs us on the importance of discipline. And we know that it is something that is more easily learned when we are young. Yeah, when they are young. And we know that children who are not dis, uh, disciplined often go, uh, grow up being very rebellious, you know. Okay. Um, they have no respect for authority. And as a result, you know, they find it very difficult to submit to God. You see? Okay, something has far reaching impact, you know. If you don't get it right at the beginning, okay, we will lose out at the end. You know what is uh, foolishness of children? Some time back, one parent came to me and told me a story. You know. He said, you know, uh, my son uh, came back from school, uh, asked me to buy something for the boy, uh, for, uh, a boy uh, buy something for, the, for his girlfriend you know, from the internet, something very specific. You know. The mother looked at the son and sort of, huh? You know? And just forget about it, you know. Okay. Then he told the mother, but I told all my friends already. I told all my friends, you know. Yeah, a young boy, you know, still in uh, primary school, you know. So, you know, without getting any response from the mother, he went to see the father, you know. So, told the same thing to the father, you know. The father laughed at him, you know. <laughs> you know, and you know, it's puppy love, correct or not? Then he told the father, you know, don't you want to be a grandfather? And the father was, you know, suddenly woke up, you know, realizing, actually, what is the, my son telling me? Uh, has he done something really wrong? Uh? You know, and we underestimate our children sometimes. Uh, the capacity to understand concepts of relationship. But in this case, it's all foolishness. Where God, you know, a uh, primary boy, you know, wanting to start a, uh, some sort of relationship with that girl, you know, or know how to buy presents, uh, and then ultimately want to get married, you know. Tell the, the father, you know, don't you want to be a grandfather? You know, that, that's foolishness. Foolishness. Just now when kids said we want to be a Beckham. Foolishness. <laughs> you know, Anna, yeah, sometimes uh, you know, foolishness comes in different levels. Uh, from the very young to children to youth. Okay. So foolishness. And how do you handle foolishness? You know, in Proverbs 22, it says, Folly is bound up in the heart of a child. And the rod of discipline will drive it out. You have to drive out that foolishness in the hearts of little children. Okay, now, children we know comes program, isn't it? Yeah? They comes program and their default mode is what? Foolishness. That's their default mode, you know. That's inside them. You don't have to train them. That's how they come as a package. Foolish. They are very cute, but in their heart, they lack wisdom. And they lack a lot of other things. But they are full with foolishness. That's the only thing that they are full of. You know, they have no concept of what is right or wrong. No concept whatsoever. Okay. King David, a man full of wisdom, he has a lot of things to say, you know, about this foolishness, you know. He says in Psalm 51, you know, he spoke of being conceived in iniquity, for his nature by birth was corrupt and turned away from wisdom and towards folly. And he also said in Psalm 58 that children tell lies right from birth. Wow. From the king himself, you know. Yeah. A few days ago, one mother came and told me, you know, um, mother, but not talking about his own son, uh, talking about his nephew, three-year-old, you know, uh, beginning to send to the nursery, you know, 
So she was telling me, you know, in the nursery, uh, that nephew uh, bully everyone in the nursery, you know. Not just bully, you know. Fight with all of them, you know. Okay? And then when he comes back to the house, fight with the grandmother. Bully the grandmother, you know. If he does not get what he, his, he wants or get things done his way, you know, again, you know, there will be that shouting and that, that you know, physically bullying everyone in the house. You have this one person ruling the whole household, you know. Okay. How many of you have been to supermarket, children screaming away because they couldn't get the toy that they wanted and then they lie down screaming away? Okay, and then the mother, father don't know what to do, you know, embarrassed, you know, everyone looking at them. Okay, look, okay, I buy you, I buy you, you know. Oh, the battle is lost already. Okay, so what is the way to resolve all this? Huh? We listen to the wisdom of Solomon. The best and only way to train them is to be using the rod, you know. The rod, it's, it's a stick, it's a rotan, it's a, you know, in my case, many, many years ago, uh, when I, I believe I was in Form 1 or Form 2, you know, my father used a broomstick, okay. So, uh, the broomstick those days uh, are not like the broomsticks that we have, you know. Those sticks are hard wood, you know, those days. You know, hard wood, hard wood, uh, you know how hard wood, these days broomstick, uh, you tap, 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 uh, think, correct or not? So my father used a broomstick, and when he finished, you know, all my legs are uh, all gone, you know, okay? The next day I went to school, I used plaster. I covered up all the things, you know, so that I will not be, like, ashamed. Uh, huh? So, you know, that is the wisdom of King Solomon, okay? So... In Proverbs 23, uh, 23 uh, it says, Do not withhold discipline from a child. If you punish them with a rod, they will not die. They will not die. Okay? Punish them with the rod and save them from death. Okay? Qualification. Uh, when you discipline, I'm not talking about abuse. I'm not talking about caning in anger. Okay? You must really you know, have control over your emotions when we discipline our children. Okay, we must be able to let them know in a rational manner why we are doing what we are doing. Okay, so remember, we are not punishing our children, we are training them. Training them, huh? Okay, but I want you to look at uh, verse 14, you know, it says, punish them with the rod and save them from death. Now, this is the NIV. In the New King James Version, it says, you know, you will save them from hell. It's very serious, you know. So in other words, uh, there's a heaven and hell situation. You know. Heaven and hell, you know. So it is a serious matter. We don't take things lightly in cases like this, you know. Okay, so, you know, reason uh, children grow up never learning to submit to the wills of God because they never, never learn to submit to the will of the Father. That's the starting point. Yeah, that's the starting point, you know. It's because they never submitted to the discipline of the parents. They never learned to know how to submit their will to God. Okay, so um, this is something that concerns all of us, every one of us, you know. Because you know why? Because we are a church family. Children are our future. Okay, if we do not Make sure they start on the right footing. Eh? We will ruin their lives. We will ruin their lives, you know. So, spanking won't kill them, but deliver them from hell. Now, this is something that we hear all the time, you know. Spare the rod, spoil the child. According to the Bible, in Proverbs 24, it says, Whoever spares the rod hates their, ch uh, hates their children. But the one who loves their children is careful to discipline them. It is not about spoiling the child. You know. It's wrong. It's about hating them. Now, it, I'm not talking about real hate-hate, you know. I'm talking about if you don't love your children, 
if you don't love your children, you will fail to discipline them. That's what it says, you know. Okay? So, um, it's about bringing them up in love. And to love them is to discipline them. It's so very, very important. I want to go into some steps, you know. Uh, six ways. Um, things for us to look at when we discipline our children. Eh? The first thing uh, is you must give clear instructions. Uh, give clear results and give clear reasons why you are doing it. Example, um, holidays coming, uh, example. You know? uh, children come back, you know, you tell the children, you know, hey, these school holidays, uh, I want you to finish your homework uh, uh, by, let's say, after three weeks. Yeah, something reasonable. Uh, you must check with them what's the workload like. You know, they might have homework for every day of the holidays. Okay, so you will have to, you know, find out uh, there's no black and white how it should be done. But you must give them clear, clear guidelines, you know, okay, how to do it and when to do it. Clear instruction. I want you to finish it by a certain day. Okay, so in so doing, I want you to remember, you know, that um, in Ephesians 6.4, it says, Fathers, do not exasperate your children. Instead, bring them up in the training and instruction of the Lord. So it is talking about don't, uh, don't make your, your children grow, go mad lah, over your, your instruction. Lah. You know, sometimes uh, what you give them is not reasonable. Okay? We are encouraging them. Don't exasperate them. Okay? Don't frustrate them. You know? okay? So um, the thing also is, you know, um, you know, why we are doing it, you know, we let them know, you know, give clear results. Huh? Just now about talking about clear instruction. Now the next part, clear results. You let them know, you know, that um, if you are able to finish all those things, you know, then you don't have to uh, miss, you don't have to miss uh, KKC, la, you know, uh, all the other church events, la, and plus a few other things, you know. And in so doing, uh, you're also learning, you're also learning how to do planning. Yeah, so that, you know, during the last Sunday of uh, before school starts, you know, uh, panic in the household. You know, 11 pages of writing not finished, plus a lot of other things, you know. And so what happened? Parents got to do the homework. The homework. It's so sad. Huh? Parents got to do the homework. So, you know, this, this, these are some of the things that we must remember. Okay? So the next part huh, is be convincing. Okay? You must be able to get the attention. You must be able to get firm. You don't have to be very loud. Okay? We... We treat our children like normal adults, grown children, you know. We talk to them in a rational manner, okay. You don't like always be very authoritative, you know. It's like you, are, you want them to be your friend. And you want them to look, up, look at you as a friend. And you must get control, okay. And um, the important thing for you to remember, the goal is what? To get them to obey obey you, okay? And to get control is you must really sit down with them and talk to them, you know, one-to-one, one-on-one, okay, in a nice corner and let them know, you know, hey, these are some of the things that you have to do. If you don't do it, I will spank you. Must be very clear, you know. If you don't do it, I will spank you, okay? And spank you very, very hard. Must be very, very clear. Okay, and you know, the, the child must understand, you know, that these are important things in life. You know, you must learn to obey those that are responsible for them. Okay, then uh, number three, we have to remember uh, we must be consistent, you know. When you say something, make sure you do it. Otherwise, the child will know, you know. Okay, um, children are very smart, you know. Mother say no, run to the father. Father say no, run to grandfather, okay, and go on and on and then go up, you know, then come down again, okay. So, uh, you know, just now, when we talk about, uh, when we talk about uh, grandfather, you know, being a grandfather, being a grandparent is a fantastic, you know, because you can get, you can do all the loving but no responsibility, yeah, because the, the responsibility is on the parents to discipline the children, 
you know, grandparents only love them, buy them all sorts of things, you know, when they, you know, when, when they disobey, oh, let the daughter, let your daughter or son handle it, you know, okay? So, you know, we must be uh, consistent, okay, uh, with our instructions and guidelines, you know, you must keep your word, you know. When you say certain things already, yeah, it's not negotiable. Of course, unless there's something really uh, uh, unavoidable, okay, you must stick to what that has been given, uh, that instruction, you know. Keep your method. Do it the same every time, you know. Okay, every time there's some issue coming up, make sure you handle it the same way. Otherwise, uh, I tell you the children smarter than you, you know. They wriggle their way out, okay. So, you know, these people uh, spend more time on the computer than you, you know. They're learning all the tricks, all the bad tricks. And then, uh, the fourth thing uh, is be convicting, not condemning. Be convicting. The difference between conviction and condemnation. Conviction is specific. Specific. Uh. Condemnation is like Satan says you are a bad person. You are a horrible person. You are no good and you're worse than everyone else in Ipo. That's condemnation. Okay? So don't ever tell a child he or she is bad. Never. Huh? But he's a good he's a good child. It's just that that child did bad things. And bad things happen to people who do bad things. Okay? So tell them, you know, that you are teaching them to obey. Five, be chastening, not chastising. God chastens those whom He loves. And let me read to you, uh, Hebrews 12, 6, 7, because the Lord disciplines the one He loves and He chastens everyone He accepts as His Son. Endure hardship has disciplining uh, sorry, has in your hardship has discipline. God is treating you as his children. But what children are not disciplined by their father? So chastisement is punishment. Chastening is correction with love. Now we are not trying to uh, punish the child. Huh? I want you to remember this all the time. You know, I love all our children. Every single one of them is precious in God's sight. And they are too in my sight, you know. But what I'm trying to do is to correct the child's behavior. I'm trying to drive away foolishness. And God doesn't chastise us because He already chastised Jesus. So Jesus corrects those whom He loves. And here's the uh, three things I want you to remember, you know, uh, when we talk about uh, this uh, chastening uh, is give correction. Not punishment. Huh? Correction. Give correction. Not punishment. Okay? Give covering. Not embarrassment. Give covering. Not embarrassment. What is covering? Covering means protection. We protect our children, isn't it? I made a mistake many, many years ago when I uh, corrected, I mean, I disciplined one of my girls in front of her friends. I disciplined her in front of her friends, you know. And, you know, I can understand why she got so mad with me that day. Understandably, I was in the wrong. So, give protection, not embarrassment. Okay, so, you know, when we uh, correct uh, our children in front of other children, you know, uh, it produces shame, you know. It's shame. It's shameful, you know. Okay, and... Uh, shame never produces never produce a good fruit in your shame. It does not produce a good fruit in their lives. Okay? So, um, number six, be compassionate and forgiving. Be compassionate and forgiving. Okay? So, you know, when everything is over, discipline finished already, yeah? Okay? So, um, you know, um, uh, we hold him, we hug him, we heal him. Okay? And release forgiveness. Okay? Just as Jesus forgiven us, you know, turn over a new leaf, you know, we forget about it. You know, trusting that our children have learned an important lesson. 
and we get on with what we need to do for the rest of the day. Okay, we don't hold it against him anymore. Okay, now sometimes um, some children will be, be a, a bit more difficult. You know, when you hold them, you spank them, uh, and you know you tell them why you are uh, where, why they are spanked. You know, you spank them after that. Now uh, you hold them, expecting them to to stop crying. You know, wow, they push you away. Okay, and you hold on to them. And tell them, stop crying. Stop crying. Because if you don't stop crying, I'll spank you again. Okay? If they continue crying, you let them know, hey, you are crying in rebellion. You have to learn to control your will. You know, that, that, that rebellion uh, that's inside them, you know, that rebellious streak inside them, you know, you have to let them know, you know, hey, you got to control this. Okay? And after a while, you know, the sobbing will slowly stop. And then you know, you know, that they are trying to control that rebellion inside them, you know. Now, what if it doesn't stop? Well, then you have to go on, or maybe even to the next day, okay, when uh, he has quieted down somewhat, uh, then you talk to them. You have to take it further with them. You know, this is what you need to do as someone who loves our children. Now, um, can other forms of discipline work apart from using a rotan, yeah, a cane, a rod? Uh, some parents would uh, put their children in a corner. Every time they misbehave, you stand on the corner. Okay? Um, some children do not respond well to physical discipline. Some don't. Okay? Um, some parents, you know, uh, take away the toys. Yeah, my grandson. Uh, one time I went, my went to visit my grandson. I said, "What happened to all the toys Grandpa bought for you?" Oh, they are upstairs. I said, "What are they doing upstairs?" Mommy took it away. So I said, "When are you getting it back?" So my daughter said, "When he behaves, he have to redeem them one by one. One by one, you know. That, that's one way of discipline." Okay, another way of discipline our children is you take away privileges now for our young people. Okay, um, don't listen. Now. Okay, never mind. No more football or you know, no more uh, time out with your, your friends. You cannot go to the movies for one month or something like that. Okay, so you know, uh, as a parent, you know, we should try to employ a method that will work. But if all things fail, come back to the gold standard, which is the rotan. Okay, so, you know, while the Bible instructs physical discipline, the goal is to build godly character. The method used to produce that goal is secondary. I want you to remember that. You know. Okay, so the goal is to build godly character. The method employed is secondary. Now, I say this because some governments right now uh, are beginning to uh, look at uh, physical discipline uh, as uh, child abuse, you know. And my daughter reminded me, you know, Daddy, you know, you cannot just whack them one, you know, okay, because it's child abuse. So, I mean, that, that's Australia, uh, America, uh, I heard Switzerland, I don't know about UK, you know. So... Uh, you cannot use physical discipline because that will be considered as child abuse. Okay, so generally, you know, a government would know what's right for our children. But can you trust? Can you trust our government to discipline our children in the ways of God? You cannot. You cannot. So if we have a choice, we need to weigh it against the standard of discipline outlined in the Bible. You have to consider this. I want to talk to all the youths in our midst right now. I want us to look at the example of Daniel. Uh, book of Daniel, chapter 1. Uh, when it talks about uh, Daniel and his friends. In chapter 1, Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, conquered Jerusalem. He took many things back to his treasure house of his gods. Huh? 
uh, he also brought back young men to be trained in the service for the royalty in the king's palace. You know, okay, these young men are bright young men. Okay, and they were to be trained in the language and literature of the Chaldeans. And because of that training, uh, a portion of the king's table will be allocated to them. Wine, uh, the best food, uh, you know, whatever you can think of, the best of everything. Okay? But then Daniel know how to live in times like this, you know. Yeah, Daniel know a standard, the standard of God. What is the standard of God? Daniel and his friends chose not to defile themselves. He said, I don't want to do it because I don't want to get spoiled and al allow myself to indulge. There's a principle involved in this. Huh? I want you to listen. Daniel drew the line of resistance. He drew a line of resistance, you know. Okay? And um, he trained his appetite. He trained his appetite. And in so doing, he learned to control his hunger. He drew a line of resistance. He trained his appetite. In so doing, he learned to control his hunger. Now, what do I mean by this? You know, the thing that you and I begin to taste and enjoy. Let's talk about food. Huh? Things that we learn to, uh, to enjoy and desire. You know, good stuff. Huh? These are things that will be planted in our memory. And becomes our desires. Good thing, good stuff. Okay? So, you know, um, it will make our life enjoyable and delightful. These are desires, man. Okay? Now, if you have learned to draw that line of resistance, uh, you will know when a red flag comes up in your spirit. And you know what you will do? You will withdraw. You will stand back. You will shut it down. That's what I mean, you know. That line of resistance is very, very important. Know when to step back. We must be ever be conscious, you know, um, of the things that will compromise our convictions. You know, uh, in KKC, in youth, uh, why do we do so many teaching, you know, going to the Word of God, teaching you uh, ways and parables, and it is for a lesson. These are the ways of God. These are the standard that God has for each and every one of us. Each and every one of you are prime targets of the enemy. The internet media will pursue you from childhood into your adult lives. Your appetite and hunger, if not checked, will open the doors of your hearts and minds to things that you are not able to handle. I've come across adults uh, because of uh, when they open the heart of their lives and the soul, uh, the spirit gets corrupted, polluted, you know. All those images, uh, whenever they close their, their eyes, you know, all the imagination just flood back into their minds, you know. It's just like auto-recall all the time, you know, because we never have that line of resistance. We did not shut it down. We did not learn to shut those things down. Okay. So, you know, the filth of these websites, you know, they come plunging into your hearts. It will haunt you in future and threaten all your future relationships. Some of you are yearning, you know, to have girlfriends, boyfriends, relationships. I tell you, uh, no boy or girl, either way, you know, uh, if you're a boy looking for a girlfriend or your girl looking for a future husband, you know, you know, when you have all these things inside you, uh, you know, it, uh, it will harm your relationship. Believe me, it will. It will. You know, you look at discipline uh, and boundaries. Line of resistance is a boundary set up by our parents. Yeah? But you look at discipline set and taught by our parents as hindrances. You know. Oh, this one is very inconvenient. What do you know? What do you know? You know, I was 
a young person. You know, when uh, my father caught me playing football uh, before school, uh, St. Michael, uh, 11.30, I will go to school. I think those time, uh, school starts at 1 o'clock, you know. That one and a half hours, you know, I'll be playing football. And by the time I get into class, I'll be sweaty all over. And all of our friends uh, in the class uh, will be sweaty. Imagine, you know, when the teacher come in, wow, wonderful smell. And then when my father uh, saw me playing football, you know, wow, that day uh, when I went back, uh, wow, that broomstick was waiting for me. And it was not just a broomstick, but it was a rotan also, you know, double portion, you know. And why? Because he had to drive away the foolishness out of my heart, bound in my heart, you know. Okay, so, you know, sometimes we think, you know, it's very unfair for our parents to, to be so, you know, so, uh, in a way, so uh, stiff in their ways, you know. They don't understand, you know. You know, my father told me, you know, you make two choices right now. I mean, make a choice right now. Either you study or you become a footballer. My uncle uh, used to play uh, for Perak, you know, state player, you know. He was my idol, you know. Beckham of my days, uh. I was quite good at football, you know. Give me another year, I would have, you know, done quite well, you know. In university, I used to play among the Philo, you know. Not bad, you know. But my father asked me to make a choice. You want to study or you want to learn to play football? Make up your, make up your mind. Yeah, of course, I was a smart kid, you know. I chose to study, keep up football. Okay, so... You know, children, uh, sometimes when they go on the internet, uh, they're looking for something. Uh, wow, Mr. Google will tell them everything, you know. Wow, this is everything. Uh, and they think they know everything, you know. You don't. You don't. You see a picture, you think you see everything, you know. You know how much it costs uh, your parents to sacrifice to save money for your education. You know or not? You know or not? You don't. You never see the sacrifice that is involved. You know, when I was preparing to send my two girls to university, Auntie Yi and I uh, never buy new handphone, never buy new computer. You know. Whatever we buy, uh, always for them first. You know. They see or not, they don't see. You know, when I visit them every year, they buy handphone, they throw away, put one corner. You know. I will bring back to Auntie Yi. I will say, ah, your new phone. <laughs> That's your new phone. You know, we, we, we learn to use hand-me-downs, you know. For them, uh, it's always their priority first, you know. Hey, young people, these are your parents sacrificing for each and every one of you. You, know? you see a picture, you see it all. You don't. You know, we must learn to see the sacrifice of our parents. They know better. Trust your parents. Trust your parents. Yeah? So, why do parents discipline you? It's not to punish you without a reason. They have to train you up in love, to know what is right and wrong, based on the instructions and teachings of the Bible. Parents want the children to grow up quickly, you know, get out of the house. Quickly, the faster the better. Okay? The boundaries were not set. Discipline not enforced. Wisdom not taught. There's another shortcoming of parents. That's why I was sharing about our kids' ministry, KKC. Okay? Something for us to really think about. In ending, in Proverbs 9.10, it says, The fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. And knowledge of the Holy One is understanding. That's wisdom. The fear of the Lord. It's the beginning of wisdom. You want to be wiser, get into the Word of God. Children are impatient. Why can't I have freedom now? Well, foolishness will rule in your hearts. If we, as parents, fail in disciplining our children. And I want to let you know, you know, there's only one winner if all of us sit back and that's the enemy. 
the enemy is going to raise his flag, you know, I've won because all of us sat back. Okay? Our children make some noise when we are having dinner. Give them a smartphone. You have lost. Okay? We must learn how to, you know, discipline our children to control them. Okay? Those days, you know, when we go out for dinner, wear a handphone, you know. My father would just give me one look and all of us would sit up straight. One look only, you know. And, you know, it's for a reason. It's for a reason. You know, we as parents are always find the easy way out. You know, The easy way out is not the way that it will work. It won't work. It won't work. I want to close right now. Can I invite the music team to come up as we close? I'd like to pray for all of you. Um, parents, grandparents, Families, the church. We are a church family. Can I invite you to stand as we close? Jesus. Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to us a lot today? Father, O oh Lord, as we come before you, O oh God. We open our hearts to you. Speak to us, O oh God, each and every one of us. And we realize, O oh Lord, that we are in a battle. We are in a battle for the hearts of our children. Today, O oh God, that we have been taught, O oh God, we have learned, O oh Lord, that there is an eternity of our children at stake. Father, help us to make wise decisions, Father. When it comes to the discipline of our children and what we need to do about it, to be able to teach them wisdom in the ways of God. Father, this day you have taught us the golden standard when it comes to discipline. And Father, we thank you, Father, for every child that we have in our midst, O oh God. Every one of them is special. For they are precious in your sight. And they are precious before us, O oh Lord Jesus. You know them, O oh God, by name. Yes, O oh Lord Jesus. There are those who, like me, have friends who are having problems with their children. Maybe God is leading you what you have received today to share with them what the Bible teaches when it comes to discipline. Father, O oh Lord, give us courage to go out, O oh God, Father, to this hurting world, O oh God, to share of the ways to discipline children according to the ways of the Bible. Your standard, O Lord. Help us, O God, with these principles for discipline for ourselves. For those, O God, having a difficult time with their grown-up children, even right now, even small children. Father, I pray, Father, that you will work in the lives, Father, of the parents and the children, even right now. Father, every uh, broken relationship, communication, Father, that it will be restored in Jesus' name. And Father, we learn, O oh God, Father, this day, O oh God, Father, we do not punish, but we discipline in love. Father, O oh Lord, that when we discipline, Father, it will not be uh, by way of shouting and abuse, but it will be one of restoration. There will be gentleness, there will be firmness, there will be control. There will be forgiveness, O oh Lord Jesus. And Lord, we come before you, O oh Lord, for healing. For our parents, for our children. Those, O oh God, Father, that has uh, in a way reacted in how discipline had been meted out, O oh Lord Jesus. Father, we pray 
that you will lead us back, O oh God, onto the right path. Help us, O oh God, to begin all over with love and understanding. And Father, we want to commit all this to you. Father, what we have received today, O oh God, write it into upon our heart and spirit. This day, O oh God, Father, there will be control, Father, in um, the lives of our parents and our youths and children. Father, we know of that line of resistance when things uh, that comes our way, O oh Lord, when uh, the Holy Spirit prompts us, O oh God, that we will learn to switch off in Jesus' name. We will run to you, O oh Lord Jesus. We will run to our parents for guidance and counselling. Father, we thank you. We want to commit all this to you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.